Hello everyone. So today I am going to talk about uh, XDB and XConnect for the Sitecore marketer. Uh, so the focus is more on why you'd want to use it and some quick uh, ways to start using it uh, without too much effort. And then I'll be doing future series on from a developer's perspective on how to implement some of these uh, kind of quick wins uh, that you can implement using uh, XDB or Experience Database. I've seen a lot of scenarios and things along with my career uh, where I've come in and companies are either uh, not using the experience database at all. They've either disabled it by configuration or they've just turned off all the environments uh, related to it. Uh, another scenario I see is that they're just not using it for anything. They're, they're using it for experience analytics where they're collecting data on the users knowing the traffic patterns, but that's data that they theoretically could also get from Google Analytics or other analytics software. I want to talk about why you really should keep it on and some of the benefits that it provides, not necessarily out of the box, but with some uh, developer assistance, you can uh, start achieving some pretty cool things with the experience database. I'm not going to talk about too much about XConnect. XConnect is essentially just the communication means to communicate from one system to your experience database. So that doesn't necessarily relate too much to the marketer, but it's a part of the equation. So let's talk about why you'd want to use the experience database. The first thing that uh, is kind of the biggest benefit and probably the biggest benefit of all the things I'm going to mention is the ability to personalize your content via explicit means uh, versus implicit. So there's this whole concept of implicit versus explicit. What do I mean by that? Um, implicit is more uh, where you start personalizing content based off data that you're not actually collecting from the user, you're kind of implicitly or, you know, gathering this information based off usage data or things that you don't totally specifically know. So uh, where implicit typically comes in is I, I covered this video in the past on uh, profile cards and pattern cards, but you could start to build a, a kind of a guide of the users that come to your site you know that they hit certain pages on your site and because of that those hits on those certain types of pages you can start to score those pages and over time that scoring can lead to uh, certain patterns being triggered so that's a a general idea of what implicit personalization is but the whole idea of explicit personalization is that now you can instead of trying to make assumptions about your users you can actually use real information that the user has supplied to you uh, to start personalizing the, their experience across your website or via multiple channels such as Twitter and Facebook. You can also do it via um, some sort of EXM campaign, uh, via their emails, uh, things like that. It's really a great way that you can start collecting this data using explicit means, meaning basically you're collecting it directly from that user and then you're able to use that information later on. And it's not necessarily just about collecting that data either. They, you could have collected information about them at one point, and because of that linkage that you're building about that user, because you know who they are at that point, you can actually integrate with other systems, such as a CRM, et cetera, which I'll be getting to here in a second. Another ability that you have with XDB or Experience Database is uh, with marketing automation. Because you know pieces of information about that user, you can start to guide that user down specific paths. Um, let's say you know that they're of, of a certain gender or maybe because of their job title, if they say they're a CEO, obviously the chances of that user having a higher income is, is more likely. So you could start directing those types of users down specific paths where you can potentially lead them to some sort of outcome. It's important to note that even though this data has been supplied explicitly, this data can still be wrong. Um, so if you've collected the job title, uh, maybe from a previous session, and now you are trying to personalize the user based off that submission in a previous session with, a, with the data today uh, from the user's current visit, the data might be inaccurate. There could be multiple people in the household. One person's a CEO, the other one's uh, their teenage son, and he's filling in, you know, he's on the site. They're not gonna be as financial 
as the uh, the parent is. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. It's something to keep in mind when you start building out these things. It's not always going to apply and you're not always gonna see the outcomes you'd expect just because it could be, the data could be slightly off. Obviously in that scenario, um, the son will eventually stop using the computer and the, the father will come back and start using it. And in that case, the data would apply the personalization rules that you're assuming based off that user's information that they've collected previously, that it's it, the personalization should apply to that user's uh, uh, situation in life. Um, one other uh, scenario that you can use, and there's lots of different ways. Th these are just three that I could think of off the top of my head, is EXM list segmentation. So if you have a collection and you're using EXM, e Email Experience Manager, um, you can use data via rules that you define to kind of segment that overall collection of users that you've collected on your website and break it down into a smaller segments uh, because you know who they are. So for example, like that example I was providing before with uh, financial, if the user has a higher chance of, they make a lot more so their disposable income is a lot higher, you can segment that user into some sort of bucket that represents the chances that they have higher disposable income so therefore they might be in more interested in some frivolous types of things. Um, let's talk about what XTB stores out of the box, um, which does not require any customization. You're gonna see that it collects a lot of data that you would expect to see in Google Analytics and some of the other analytics softwares or products. Um, it collects kind of generic uh, page information uh, about when that user visited the site, um, what pages did they hit, um, etc. It's also, uh, depending on the, if geolocation is turned on, it's gonna also tell you where that user is located. Um, it's gonna tell you about its device, etc., etc. So it's gonna tell you a decent amount, but where is the value in that is what I'm saying. So if you're just collecting that, then I would say you're under utilizing the experience database because there's a lot more that it does. And if you're just collecting basic metrics on the user, in a lot of senses, you might as well just be using Google for that. And you could be using, you really should be using experience database for a lot more personalized content that you can collect about that user and then start building um, all types of marketing features around that data that you're collecting. Let's talk about uh, third-party integrations. This is where you start to see some of the power of how Experience Database collecting more information in uh, Experience Database, especially as we start going for the quick wins. Um, that data can actually start to integrate with some of your existing other systems, third-party systems that you're, you're using. If you're using Salesforce or a CRM system, this is where you can actually communicate between experience database and your CRM bi-directional. Basically, one can communicate to the other, the other can communicate to it. An example of this uh, that I can think up is, let's say you have um, a site where you sell shoes. This, this shoe site, a user comes to the site, they're not 100% sure about what they wanna buy on the site. So they just start kind of exploring the site. They look around, maybe they look at some Nike shoes and some Adidas shoes, and they're like, hmm, well, that's great. Maybe maybe they have some questions about these products and so they decide to call the, the toll-free number. That basically goes into a CRM system because they're calling a sales rep, assuming this is all set up in this, this fashion. When they call a sales rep, what could potentially happen is CRM can communicate with the experience database, look up and see basically when that user asks for their phone number or if they can read their phone number right off the bat, uh, they can take that phone number and link that into uh, their information in the experience database and kind of build a link there. Um, so you can start build, pulling in information. So that sales rep could say, oh, this user that's just calling in is looking for or was looking at Nike shoes or Adidas shoes. And so that, that sales rep now has a little bit of extra information that can be used so that sales rep can do a little bit more targeted sales or even just showing a little bit more a personalized approach for the sales rep, not necessarily just the website itself. And then that kind of goes the opposite way as well. So you could have you could have the CRM system, the customer comes in via the phone number, 
maybe they purchased an order maybe they maybe they're not ready quite yet to buy after talking to your sales rep but the sales rep can put in information about that user saying they called it was at this time you know things like that this data could populate back into your experience database and then when that user goes back to the website suddenly that user can see some sort of personalized content on the site hinting hey we saw that you were looking at the nike shoes you know obviously some of that would be based off previous sessions but they could also maybe give a discount or something like that because of the the data that they know that the person called in there's there's a lot of possibilities there so uh, that's one idea. There's other systems that could it potentially integrate with, which could bring in even more data. There is a mobile application is probably the most obvious. So uh, things that they're doing on the mobile app can link back to their website experience. There's IoT and chatbot uh, interfaces that could also kind of link back. So let's say you're talking to your you're talking to your Amazon device and you're talking about maybe you had questions about that product. So you talk to a skill that the the current application has and you're kind of interacting with it and then that data can actually go back into experience database and can then personalize the experience on the website or it can go like i said it can go bi-directional it could uh, information about their website visit can then go back into their their amazon skill which will allow the amazon skill to maybe suggest to add an order or kind of direct the user into buying, a, get them into a more specific sales funnel so that you can convert that lead. So let's, that's, that's all the reasons that you'd want to convert and, and, and potentially use experience database. But let's talk about ways that you can start taking little bits or baby steps into experience database to start collecting the pieces of data that you'd want to do uh, so that you can start getting to these long-term goals. Like, and getting integrations with your CRM. You you can't just jump and do that right off the bat, or well, you could, but it would take a lot a lot of effort. You can take baby steps and get there uh, in baby steps so that you're slowly implementing these things. The, the earlier you start some of these higher items, the better because you're actually going to, it's, it's about collecting data over time. So the more people log into your site, the more the people fill out contact information, the quicker and longer of that data is going to all be mapped up and and back together so that users that come back you'll you'll know who they are so uh, the first approach and, and thing that you'd want to implement is identifying your contacts now uh, what is a contact it's basically when somebody comes to your site let's say that's the first time they've come to your site at that visit there is going to be a cookie that's stored on that user's browsing device so it's very specific so they're using chrome they're on a pc it's going to be specific to that browser on that pc it, pc if they switch over the firefox or or never computer or anything like that that cookie no longer technically exists but basically that cookie tracks information about their current interaction and that cookie typically stays on the, the machine for um, I think it's like 20 years or something like that. A little insane, but it allows you guys to collect interactions for a long period of time based off that cookie. So user comes six months ago, they visit the site, they do some things, they come back, they still have that cookie enabled, they visit the site, do some things. Technically, that's all part of one contact and that would have two interactions. So uh, you, you can go into experience database, which is what I have uh, kind of showing here. And it would show, although I will note, until you identify, which I'll get to here, to here in a second, until you identify, you won't actually be able to see your anonymous data uh, out of the box with Sitecore, or at least in the current versions of Sitecore, uh, without en enabling indexing of anonymous contacts. But once you get to identifying all these different interactions that you have per contact can be kind of pooled into one interface so that you can see every interaction that that user has had. So let's talk about identification. So identification is the process of when somebody fills in a form or maybe they log into a into your website, at that point you you have kind of identified who they are you know either you know their email address or you potentially because they just authenticated you know their username their password you can then attach or assign 
one of those kind of unique identifiers is a fancy programmer word, but basically one of those unique things that are specific to that user, uh, to that, basically to that uh, cookie that's on that u user's machine. So um, you're gonna say, okay, somebody just filled in my contact us form. They used the email address, you know, dylany at gmail.com. Because they filled that in, I'm gonna identify that the current cookie is dylany at gmail.com. Because I now know this, now all future requests for that cookie, I know that that's associated with dylany at gmail.com. So that's very vital uh, because now when somebody, let's say somebody fills in the contact us form six months ago, we identify that user. We now know that that cookie is dylany at gmail.com or my or you know my that's my email address it, because it's been a kind of assigned to that cookie now the next time i come back let's say it's six months in the future as long as i'm on the same browser on the same device and that cookie still exists i will it'll be like whatever interaction that takes place six months later is also going to be tracked to that dylany at gmail.com uh, if that makes sense. So as soon as the cookie dies or you switch devices, you basically lose that. And that whatever that interaction is on the other device or on the same device, same browser, but without the cookie that was previously there, it's essentially anonymous again. So you'd be it'd be a lost uh, kind of cause. But let's say in the future, let's say you have a login. I think logins are the best place to use this um, because you're gonna be able to identify your user constantly. So what I mean by that is that every time that user logs in, you can identify that user. If the user logs in a lot, then you're always gonna be able to identify that user quite often. And what's great about that is that even if you lose the cookie on that device, they're gonna come back, they're gonna get a new cookie, and then as soon as you log in again, that they're gonna basically take all that old cookie data based off that previous cookie and merge it into the, the new cookie that you have. And you're gonna have all the history over multiple cookies, if that makes sense. Um, and that's really great when you start thinking about other devices as well. So if let's say you're on a mobile phone and you have a you know Chrome on your mobile phone and you're accessing the website, you log in there. Now you can track multiple devices across you know multiple channels. So it, it really, kind of exponentially grows from there. Now, obviously, I say logins are the best. Emails are, are pretty good, but it, it's a little harder to collect those. You have to kind of pull them out of the user. You have to try to get the contact us, kind of guide the user down to, if you don't know who they are, and, and you can build personalization roles where you if it, it says, you don't know who this user is, it's anonymous, unknown contact, then you can push that user to identify who they are. So. I would highly recommend that as a first step. Um, without that, the next steps I have are just not possible. Well, they may be possible, but they're not as valuable to uh, your organization. So the next step is collecting data about that user when you can. So let's say that user comes in, logs in. At the time, typically you can collect information about that user from their authenticated uh, profile, and you can store that data back in the uh, experience database and you definitely want to do that uh, if you have their email you have their first name last name all that data you should definitely store back and this data I'm talking about storing is data that's out of the box so I'm not going to the the next step is is a little bit further than this um, where you start building your own facets but this is where out of the box Sitecore provides a bunch of data points that you can store out of the box those being kind of personal information subscriptions emails phones address, avatar, or image. Those types of things are out of the box. You don't have to build any sort of customizations to the experience database, and you can start storing those values right away. So somebody fills in a contact us form, you just take all those fields or all the ones that make sense. So if it's a contact us form and there's just a description, should you collect that information and store it in the X XDB? You could, you could store this in some sort of fashion. If you really wanted to track how many times a user has filled in the contact us form, that type of information might be useful. And that goes more into the number three I'm gonna talk about here in a second. But do you really need that to really know who the user is? I would say not really, unless you're in that scenario where you, you really wanna know how many times they've filled in the contact us form. 
and there might be other way better ways to track that anyways you could track goals uh trigger goals every time they complete a contact us form and like i said if you are in a form or in a, if the user is identifying via a uh, login like there's other ways that you can collect data as well from that if you're using something like identity server 4 there's claim data that typically comes back from identity server you can store those values it's just a forms authentication login you should be able to access profile data as soon as they authenticate this is all technical details like i said this is a marketing focused uh tutorial so just reach out to your developer and he should be able to just just say you want to collect profile data on login and they'll they'll be able to take it from there i'm also going to be covering that topic in a in a few weeks so that's the second scenario and when you start doing that it's really important where you can start seeing this data so as soon as you start collecting information about that contact and start identifying that contact you can start seeing what i'm kind of showing on the screen right now so this is the experience profile um, you've probably always seen it in your dashboard it's up in the top left in the marketing area and if you go into it you'll get kind of a listing of I, I wish I could show it because uh, one of my environments is kind of messing up but it's basically a listing of all the people most recently identified and their details so if you go to that and you look at it it could show a bunch of email addresses that have recently been active on your site and so you can click on one of those and basically you'll see what I'm showing here on the screen. If you've collected their first name and last name via the uh, contact form or, or any form for that matter, and you've maybe uh, collected it via some sort of login, you can now actually see specifically who that user is. Um, you can know who they are just based off what they filled into your website. Um, some other things that you'll notice on this page as well is it can show you an email address. Like I said, if you wanted to connect to a CRM or some way, or maybe the email address could link up to the CRM, you could have a phone number in here and you could collect this on your contact us forms. Maybe it would actually add value if you added the phone number to your contact us form just so you could uh, identify based off phone number. I would say phone number is maybe a good idea to identify based off of you have to kind of make that assumption based off your organization um, email like i said is typically better other uh, types of things you can identify on are like twitter handles um, facebook and and just just to be clear you can identify on multiple one contact wouldn't just identify to their email but it could also identify to their um, their login or could log in or be associated with a Twitter handle. It could be multiple sources for that as well, which gets a little bit into the uh, technical side of it. There is, I will note before we kind of start wrapping this up, is there is some of this built in. Uh, Ex Sitecore Experience Forms uh, allows for you to uh, collect some of this data out of the box. Uh, identification, as far as I'm aware, 9.1 and below still doesn't support the, the, the save action that allows you to identify a contact based off a of field. Pretty sure that's gonna be coming out uh, relatively soon. There's also a lot of videos and uh, tr uh, kind of uh, blog articles out there that describe how to do it. But you don't have to wait for all or try to find all that. I'm actually going to be doing a video that just talks about that specific topic. Probably do it about experience forms. And I'll probably do it on just a basic uh, kind of login approach as well. And then finally, I, I should just note it again, uh, just so you're, you're aware. This does require all the things I've talked about really will require a developer. Um, there's there's some, like I said, the cycle forms won't totally require that. But uh, most of this will, but if hopefully I've shown the value today in today's video uh, of why you'd want to do some of that effort. And I will say that identifying a contact or saving pieces of data really isn't all that complex. Um, and it's not a whole lot of effort. And like I said, I'm going to be doing videos that talk about how you would do that. So you could potentially reach out to your developers, have them go through the, the developer focused videos in my channel on this specific topic and they should be able to achieve and build out. And and really what you're gonna start seeing is is uh, return on your investment from buying and, and going with a Sitecore license um, versus some of the other competitors in the space. You're gonna start seeing the value of some of these tools that you invested in. So um, I hope that uh, this was an informative video and uh, that's it for today. Thank you.